Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Adam and Orange and welcome to another Metal Earth build video. We are going to start working on the Stagecoach. Today, my first of the Wild West models that came out some time back. It's taken me a while to get to them because of requests and other models that were in the queue. But this was a request and I'm finally getting around to building it. So let's go to the table, open this up, see what it's all about and start putting it together. All right, we have the Wild West stagecoach stage coach here to open up. Seems a bit thick. This is going to be my first Wild West build. Oh, that's heavy, and there's more. Uh-oh. Every now and then, I get one that's stuck in the package. Yeah, there we go. Must have been a little bit of glue overlap there we go we have one metal sheet two metal sheets three metal sheets and i've noticed i think i've mentioned this before but they they a lot of times pack the back sides together with the other sheet this is how they came in the package the colored sides are facing away from each other so they don't scratch and then the other third piece is under the instructions. So it's nice that they package them so that they won't damage themselves. Three sheets, we've got two pieces of paper. I'm going to try and briefly go over the instructions for anybody that's new to this hobby or new to building Metal Earth models. I'm gonna open this all the way up. I've opened up the wrong one. Like a bozo, that is not the one. I should know better start with the one that says Metal Earth on it that has the logo. That's going to have page one. Open it all the way up to where we can see both page one and two. I need to better organize over here. All right, so we're going to try and get page one into focus here. So at the top of that, you've got the Metal Earth logo, a line drawing of a model in one of the sheets. We've got the 360 view, both the website and the QR code you can scan or type in the, the web address to go to where you can see a 360 view of the completed model. I haven't checked to see if this one's up. It should be by this point. Below that, we have a, an outline of the three metal sheets. I'm just going to randomly grab the one on top here. Looks like I've grabbed sheet C. Seems to match up. If you notice... You have the numbers all the way around. The sheets themselves are labeled. You've got sheet A, B, and C with part numbers. Now, unlike MU, which I recently finished an MU model, the part numbers are completely unique. So you won't have a part one on A and a part one on B and a part one on C. But the fact that they label these A, B, and C and will do so in the instructions will help you know which sheet to look at to find the part. But all the part numbers are labeled beside, pointing at the individual parts. So, I say there's no duplicate parts. There are, they're the same part. They're not two different parts labeled the same number. You notice that a lot of these are colored in. The ones that are colored in are duplicate parts, but they're the exact same part and they're used in more than one place. But the fact that they're colored in is also going to make it easier to find. I love that they do that. So for instance, we have this green bit here, which is labeled as 51. That's also 51. We have this, what looks like a kind of bluish gray, mind you, I'm not that good with colors. This is not labeled, but if we look over here on sheet B, we have it labeled as 45. So probably the front and back ends of the stagecoach, they're identical. And there we are, actually the sides it looks like. But moving on, over here we have a little bit more information. We have the, well, we have a sample part with the notation on insertion tabs insertion holes and fold lines tabs go into holes i mean simply maybe on the same part maybe on different parts fold lines are pre-scored areas that make it easy for you to fold the part because parts that parts fold on the fold lines we have a legend here e when you see that pointing at a, a section or a side it's pointing at the engraved or colored side any e is the non-engraved non-colored side Try not to get engraved lines confused with the engraving and coloring because sometimes, a lot of times the back of something will have engraving, but it's 
fold lines and that can be a little confusing. The tension point, usually when you see that pointing at something, is trying to get your attention to make sure you align the thing a certain way. Blue circle and green triangle, they've been in these instructions forever. Blue circle means to insert a tab in its slot. We have an example here and twist it to 90 degrees. No, excuse me, that's a green triangle. A blue circle is to insert and fold over. So, green triangle means to insert a tab in its slot and twist it to 90 degrees. A blue circle means to insert and fold. Folded tabs are cleaner looking, but usually less secure. Twisted tabs are more secure and often used on the inside of parts. Some assembly tips. Our A assembly tip, if needed, slightly twist tabs to hold the parts together, then untwist and bend them down for a nice finish. Uh, suggestion that I've been handing out in videos for, for four or five years now. And recommended tools, we're gonna to talk about tools here in a moment. I'm gonna go down to the assembly flow chart where we start with part one, which is on sheet B, folded like that. So we look over on sheet B over here on the, the uh, first part of the instructions, find part one. There it is, clip it out. You notice that it's colored in, so there's more than one part one. We come over here, the red, when a part is highlighted in red, that's indicating that part is folded somehow. And the blue arrows show you it's folded in a V shape. Come over here and we attach it to what is part two on sheet C with twisted tabs. Come over here, you see a blue line and arrow looks to be indicating to twist something though that's a little foggy right there what they're saying to twist no it's not i'm looking at it backwards so that's basically showing to fold this long flap down at nine degrees come over here it's a circular line around it meaning to curve that to a circle blue circle here means to insert the tab in a slot and fold it over we have red bit highlighted with the arrows pointed out and angled down to that those little tabs that stick off there's two of them get folded down flat and you end up with that and that's the gist of it that's how you read the instructions you go down to line three you just follow the arrows folding shaping and curving and attaching things as it indicates the numbers go in order once you get to the bottom flip over to page three follow that through page four we do have some Mark uh, remarks here, make sure part B, 16, are connected to the right holes no, number, right holes on part B, 17, and B, 18, as shown below. So they do occasionally insert some text in here. Is a rare instance of an attention point, and it's not talking about alignment, but it's, it's actually got notes of making sure you do something a particular way. It can go either way. We don't actually, I don't actually see that hand all that often in the instructions. But then you get finished with three, you go to four, and when you get down to four, you grab the other piece of paper, open it up to the inside, do five, page six, page seven, and page eight, and then you will be done with your model. Let's take a moment to talk about some tools, and I've got what I consider the basic set in front of me, starting with a pair of flush clippers or side clippers. These are primarily used to cut the parts out of the sheets. You can get the parts out by folding and twisting, though you run the risk of breaking something you didn't mean to break. A good pointed set of side cutters or flush cutters, like this Play-Doh set that I've got here, work really great for quickly getting the parts out so you can get on with your build. I have, of course, a small selection of tweezers. We've got a fairly basic set. This actually came with one of the older Iconics sets, and I've been using it for quite a while. But a good sturdy flat end tweezers can come in really handy for doing a great number of things. I also have a few pieces from a precision set of tweezers. If you need some precision tweezers, just search precision tweezers online. You'll be able to find something out there. These two are very similar. They have a very fine point, though I did grind the tip of these down to help me grab tabs. And then this is just kind of a flat set for getting in tight spaces. And then we have couple of pieces left over from the Fascinations three-piece set. I broke the clippers long ago, so I had to replace them. But we have long nose pliers and flat nose pliers. Really handy. These are handy for bending long parts. And these are handy for bending short sections right here. But this is the basic set. We'll do a great amount of things with just this set right here. You'll be able to build a lot of different models and do a lot of different things. 
when it comes to shaping curved, domed, or rounded kind of parts, I like to have some sort of tool to mold things around. And I've designed some 3D printable tools for use in that. You might see me using the video. I've got some cone shaping tools. I have a little block here for rounding stuff. I have larger cone shape combo tools and even a little tool for shaping dome shapes. However, you can just look around the house and find parts, dowel rods, pencils, beads, thing, paint brushes, pens, things like that can also be used to shape stuff as well. As for the 3D printed parts, I do sometimes print up extras and sell them on Etsy. Or you can just get the SDL files if you have a 3D printer yourself and print these out. I'll try to include links to both the SDL files and the Etsy store in the description down below. Talked a little bit about some tools and I've got some basic tools at the ready. My instructions laid out, my sheets over here. I'm going to organize things, get my magnifying lamp back up here and uh, let's get started on this build. There were a lot of small bits to bend over around this part.
The instructions seem to indicate to put the railing together, then attach it to the top. I pretty much ignored that and started building the railing on the top. There was a little bit of a hiccup trying to fold over the tabs on the corners, and in hindsight it would have gone much better had I just twisted those corners rather than trying to fold over on that very flimsy section. The long sides of part 10 were tougher to fold over than expected and didn't cleanly fold. I'm guessing this is by design.
The sides of part 14 also did not want to fold over cleanly. I started to wonder if it's a matter of the paint making things thicker and not able to easily fold. I'm also looking back at, back at part 10 and wondering if that was intentional after all. I bent the two folds on part 20 a little bit before attaching it to part 19. I was worried I would have a hard time starting the bends after the two parts were attached together.
I really like the detail in this bag.
And as you may have already guessed, this is going to be more than one part. We're at the end of part one. It's going to be a two-part video. It's taking a little bit longer than I had hoped to put this together. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just a lot of detail to it and a lot to focus on and worry about. I mean, it's, it's more complicated than I expected, which means it's got a lot more detail. Been some frustrating parts, but not enough for me to throw it down and, and stop. Though I rarely ever do that. I'll see you in part two where we finish up this build. Thank you for watching. As always, keep on keeping on.